Hello, everyone, and welcome to Step 1, The Big Picture. My name is Brad Flickinger with schooltechnology.org, and let's get right into what The Big Picture is. What we are talking about today in the big picture of this whole workshop series is 21st century skills. We're going to talk about what do they look like, um, how do we get teachers to have them, how do we get students to have them, how do we assess them. We're going to cover that all over these next 12 steps that we're going to do. But what we're really going to just focus on for the big picture is kind of the history of 21st century skills, where they came from, what they look like, and a little bit on how we assess them. So let's get started. Now you've got to understand that 21st century skills is a really, really big subject. We could spend hours talking about each skill, but we're gonna just really be talking about the tip of the iceberg in this series. So without any further waiting, here are the six skills that we're going to find as 21st century skills. Now they vary from kind of from group to group on what they're calling 21st century skills, but they kind of all come down to these basic items. And so we're gonna follow the ones from the International Society uh, for Technology and Education, or ISTE, and here are their six skills. So creativity and innovation, communication and collaboration, research and information fluency, critical thinking, problem solving and decision making, dis digital citizenship, and technology operations and concepts. So that's what we're talking about as far as 21st century skills. But before we get into those individual skills, let's spend a little bit of time on the history of where do these skills come from and why are they needed. Let's just shine a little spotlight on some things that have happened. I'm going to put two parts of this slide up right now, and that is back in 1998, ISTE formed the National Education Technology Standards for Students. So basically a list of what they felt the tech standards need to be for students. And they kind of got this list from, you know, the employers and industry saying, we just do not feel that the students in America are ready to come to work with their tech skills. And then in 2002, the Partnership for 21st Century Skills, or P21, they kind of put out a similar list saying, hey, you know, we're hearing the same thing. But that really kind of flew under the radar until 2006. And let me put up these three pieces of 2006. This is the perfect storm, if you will, of 21st century skills. First of all, Time Magazine comes out with this article called How to Bring Our Schools Out of the 20th, 20th Century. Not a very flattering article about education in America. They mostly compared us to being back in the 50s still. And the only thing we've really updated is we've gone from green chalkboards to white um, whiteboards. And so that's that really was the slam on it saying, you know, everybody else has gone forward with tech skills except education. And then also in 2006, Thomas Friedman publishes his best selling book, The World is Flat, basically saying that outsourcing is going to hit us hard and that with the internet and everything, you can uh, have employers in India and in China and all these things. And boy, has a lot of things come true from Thomas Friedman's book back in 2006. And then also these two guys, uh, Carl Fish and Scott McLeod, put together this you know little presentation they showed to their district called Shift Happens, talking all about uh, just some of these facts about how technology is really changing the world rapidly, um, how there will be more English speakers in China than in the U.S. pretty soon, and that information will start to double every 72 hours. It's just some phenomenal facts. And they just show it to their district. Well, they also post it on YouTube, and this thing takes off virally. Everybody's watching it. Everybody's talking about it. And suddenly they're going, okay, what are we doing about 21st century skills in our schools? So that's really where this has all come from. But the bottom line is our graduating high school students just lack the skills needed to compete in today's global economy. Okay, that's the bottom line of what all this came down to. So what are we going to do about it? So if I asked 100 teachers to tell me what is the goal of education, I'm sure I'd probably get 100 different answers. And this is really the answer that I've kind of come up with with talking to educators out there. And I, I hope you support me in this. And really, we are in the business of making a future of employable, productive, and happy people. That's what we do as educators. Now, if we make just happy people, but they're not employable, we haven't really done our job. So we need to make them productive and employable and all these studies were saying that they don't have some of these skills you know, they might have math and reading and all these things but if they lack these basic tech skills or 21st century skills then they're not very employable and that's what we want to really do but back in there there's a key word we want to make a future of them and so future how do we predict the future that's the real kicker here so here's a little uh elementary kid coming to school for his first day of kindergarten he's going to graduate in 2022 so what is his world going to look like in 12, 13 years? 
I don't know. I can't can't even predict next year practically when it comes to technology. So to really hammer this point home, let's go back 12 or 13 years and say, what what was it like in 97 and what was missing from things we commonly use every time, every day now? So these are just common items we use every day. Look at all these things. These didn't really exist at all in 1997. DVDs, we're still watching VHS tapes. No Wi-Fi, no broadband internet. We were dialing into the internet. Uh, GPS, all the satellites were still locked from the government, so that hadn't been released yet. iPods, iPhones, hybrids, all those things didn't exist that are so commonplace today. This is just to give you an idea how much things are going to change, that we really can't chase this little tail, okay? We can't go chasing the little cutting-edge technology tail because we're just going to go run around and around. So we need to stop teaching technology when I'm talking, you know, specific applications, like this is how you do it in this program right now, this version. We need to teach skills so they're adaptable, whether they sit down to a PC or a Mac or this version of a, of a word processor or that version of a word processor. They, they get in it and they know what to do because they're creative and they're innovative and they can do these things. And that's what it's really about. The other thing is, is what do they look like? And we're going to show a little video in just a couple of slides here. And I want to really show you what 21st century looks like, uh, these skills look like to these students. And then the last part is, and how do we know if a student even has these? See, we've got to, if, if we're talking 21st century skills, then we've also got to talk 21st century assessment. We don't go and try to give them a test to find out if they've got 21st century skills. There's a different way, and we're going to talk about that in the upcoming presentations here. So I'm going to finish our little lesson today with this video from Mabry, Georgia, from a middle school there. These are sixth grade students that put together this video. Okay, think about that, sixth grade. And here are all the skills listed around the edge of it. And you just watch when these skills pop up during this video. Here we go. So how long have you lived in China? Well, this is my second time living in China. We had a video conference with Matt while he was in Beijing, China. He told us about a foundation that you will learn about in our movie. Oh my gosh, shopping is so exhausting. Ferris Tay, where are all your bags? Well, I asked Ferris Tay why she didn't buy anything today. She said she had seen a short video on the internet about an American man living in China. He was asked by a friend to donate $250 to buy a water buffalo for a poor family. When he asked the local farmer about receiving a water buffalo, the farmer replied that it would be the best gift, worth one year's salary. A five-year-old water buffalo can work for 15 years. So they bought the water buffalo and delivered it to the very poor Sioux family living in Dajuan. They were helping four generations, the great-grandmother, the grandmother, the father, and the daughter. When the family received the gift, they were all in great shock. I have an idea. In order to help us raise money to purchase a water buffalo for a family in China, please donate $1 for a raffle ticket. Your donation will enable you to participate in a drawing for one of these three Vera Bradley purses. Do you remember the video conference we had with Matt in Beijing? Well. The money that is donated will go to the Kiva Foundation that Matt told us about to help the poor in China. Through technology, we as sixth graders can change a purse into something much more meaningful. With your help, we can change the world. Wow, that is just amazing what these kids put together. And I hope you're like me. You can look at every one of these skills around the edges of this video and you say, yep, these kids did it. And they're proving they know these skills by the artifacts, the digital artifacts that they produce. This is amazing. Okay, we're done the lesson part of this, so just go right down to the next video, and that's the action items. And we're gonna talk about the things that you can do right now in your school to start moving towards your teachers and your students having 21st century skills. Thank you, my name is Brad Flickinger with schooltechnology.org.